Well, welcome everybody back to the figure kit garage fellow resin heads and kit builders brent krug back with millicent patrick work in progress part six uh when last we met i had finished the nameplate the eyes and the fossilized creature hand for this bust and unfortunately i had to break away for a week with virginia to travel to the state of virginia um in the wake of her father's untimely passing um, needless to say, after a week in Virginia and having to jump between four airports and three aircraft and 4,200 miles worth of travel, uh, by the time we got back last Saturday night, I was definitely not able to conjure up the energy thanks to jet lag uh, to be able to come back out. Um, but Monday I felt rested enough to where I could go ahead and off camera I decided to paint her coat. And I love the way that it turned out. I'll bring her forward on camera a little bit. All the you can hardly tell if there's highlights there, but they are there. I used a folk art matte uh, vintage white for the base coat. Instead of going all white, I wanted to use a more off-white color for the coat, and then use the highlights or did uh, the highlights in ivory white, which it has more white to it than a standard ivory, which was slightly odd because most ivory whites have almost a yellowish tone to them. I uh, used the uh, Army Painter uh, Shark White, which is more gray than white, uh, for the shadows of her coat, misted uh, the vintage white back over the top of all of it, and I really love how it turned out. Um... Tonight's video is going to be primarily focused on working on the cave part of the base on the body and on the underside of the dress itself. I'll be using roughly three, four, five, six, seven. There's about eight different shades of brown all together. Seven, excuse me. Seven different shades of brown. Uh, one of them is a wash. But it uh, jumps between Green Stuff World, Army Painter, Citadel, Vallejo, and that's pretty much it. Those, uh, those brands. So I'm going to start off. And let me get, need to get a new uh, gloss so in case I get it on my hands. I don't make a mess. I want to say a big thank you to everybody that's uh, been watching the videos. I hope you guys have uh, have learned as much as you've seen. It's always open. Okay, that glow shot. <laughs> Put it on and it rips. I hope this has been as entertaining as possible. I've enjoyed doing it. Got a few uh, few new kits on order. They're 3D printed. Um, that I picked up off of eBay from reputable sellers. Uh, I have a quarter scale She-Hulk coming that was uh, created by uh, Michael Rodriguez, who if you saw the review video from a year or so ago, did the uh, Punisher Hellbent on Death. Um, I also have a kit that I have been longing to do for several years now of Archangel from the X-Men. So I'll be doing reviews on those when they come in. I'm still waiting on the Nosferatu from Mike Calvert and Typhon Studios. And still waiting on my uh, confirmation of when I'm going to be getting my uh, Dutch. I know I'm on the list. So I just have to wait and hear from uh, Paul Gillis to when my number's coming up. And then the Dread Kit also from Typhon Studios, Michael White and Paul Gill. I've got quite a few kit reviews coming up uh, later on in the year. Hoping I'll be able to find the uh, the time to do that with the holiday season coming up for Amazon. My schedule is going to get pretty damn busy. So we're going to get the underside of the dress done first. I think the only thing I'm actually dreading about getting this put together is I'm going to have to fill that gap in between the inside of the coat and then the underside of the dress. There's going to be a fairly decent gap. I'm going to have to fill in if I can. So, push her a little bit back. I also got the, uh, I forgot to mention, I got the pearls of her necklace and her earrings painted in uh, 
base coated in Vallejo cold white and then later on when I'm ready to start uh, using gloss which will be toward the end I'll be coating that in uh, Liquitex iridescent pearl white and then gloss coating over that to hold that shine so let's get started I have to be careful about how I do the edges towards the outside of the dress let me zoom in on this a little bit it may take more than one coat to do this I thought I had a more flexible brush for this. That's what I get for thinking. More than likely what I'll do is I'll get a lot of this stuff started and then pause the camera once uh, every layer is done, explain what I did and uh, start on the next, uh, on the next step. So it'll probably take me a while, it's a lot of area to cover, plus I've got to do a lot of being careful around the uh, outside of the coat. Try and blend that in the right way, and I may do some work with the airbrush to uh, help blend that in a lot better. I didn't expect the uh, previous video that I did to be a minute under three hours. I'm not, <laughs> I can't imagine anybody who's actually watched all the way through these videos, to be brutally honest. I haven't looked at the uh, metrics recently on the uh, YouTube uh, studio app. Let's see exactly how much of my videos are getting watched. But I hope that our, those that are that are watching them all the way through, I hope you guys are learning a lot. You know, the color I started off with is this uh, Vallejo Game Color Smoky Ink. It's a, I guess you could say black brownish gray color. It's not a straight brown, a very different tone to it. I've used it before, and I was kind of surprised how well it does blend in. But... All in all, I 
want to try and make this look as good as possible. Having been watching a lot of videos from uh, Ground Affected and a few others on uh, painting terrain and things like that, I've learned a lot. One thing I love about this hobby in a lot of ways, you're never ever, you're, you never stop learning. You're always a student of the game no matter what. And I'm okay with that. That's how I've been teaching Virginia, and hopefully I'll be teaching uh, my niece's boyfriend, Brandon, very soon. He's interested in uh, trying to learn stuff like this, which is a really nice surprise when we were up in uh, Victorville several weeks ago. He was interested in learning how to do this, so I may be teaching another uh, future resin head on how to build and paint. I don't like how Jeff actually incorporated this cave area into the outer parts of the dress where you can actually see it overlapping into the front. A really smart idea. And I apologize if my voice sounds a little bit odd. I've been dealing with <laughs> hellacious sinus problems uh, since we left last week and got back uh, this past weekend going to a much more humid climate and coming back to our climate here in Southern California. I guess my body does not like that. thing about the uh, the coat that I can go ahead and talk about while I'm doing this the folk art paints that I used to paint her lab coat with the ivory the ivory white and the vintage white paints like that are very light in pigment so if you ever decide to use uh, craft paints like you can pick up from Michaels Joann's Hobby Lobby be very careful because they are not very pigment rich and when you thin them down to put them through an airbrush like I had to do with her with her lab coat you have to go in very very light layers to build it up because if you don't you're going to start getting runs all over the place it'll start puddling up where you don't want it to and to be brutally honest there's about seven layers of antique white in her coat alone I had a few leftover mistakes from when I painted the shirt that I had to go over and it took a lot of airbrushing to get a lot of that covered up. And mask, masking off that shirt was no easy task. I wound up using Silly Putty Glad Press and Seal on two different types of uh, automotive pinstriping tape just to make sure that I didn't have any uh, overspray onto that shirt at all and it came out fantastic so 
just be mindful of the craft paints that you use and just remember that you're going to have to paint more than one coat if you use you know folk art ceram coat uh, Americana apple barrel they're all very light in pigment and it's going to take more than one layer to do it so just keep that in mind And as you can see, this stuff is going on very light. It actually looks kind of nice, but I'm going to uh, hit it with washes of Agrax Earthshade to darken it down even more. And then start going in with relatively lighter shades. I'm going to be doing uh, this type of stone or however, whatever you want to call it um, in a much different way than what I did for She-Hulk, or no, actually it's the same thing I did for She-Hulk. Um, instead of going one color at a time, I'm basically going to be dropping at least three different shades of brown on this and this at the same time and painting them all together at once and then doing a wash over the top of that to push them back, which will actually look more natural because not all rock or stone or sediment is all one color layered over the top it's all mixed together and that's how I intend to paint this and then go back in with lighter shades dry brushes washes again stonework is a lot of back and forth just like flesh tones and everything else you want it to look right you got to go back and forth and work it in and work it together But as always, once you get done with something like this, you always want to seal up your work. So if you make a mistake and you haven't sealed it up, you got a lot of correcting to do. And I've been fortunate enough to not have to go over a lot of re, uh, repainting. A little bit on the shirt but it wasn't really a gigantic mess. And that's the smoky ink color on the inside part of the skirt. I actually like how that looks now that it's starting to darken down. It has a really, really nice brownish stone color to it. What I'm about to do now, I'm going to go against what I just told you about sealing off your work. <laughs> yeah, leave it to me to break the damn rules. But as long as you can maintain your ability to control your paint 
and not let it get out of hand. You can actually pull this off the right way. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the rawhide brown and the bestial brown and probably a little bit of the Mornfang brown from Citadel Colors and I'm going to actually paint all this together in one shot. And this will actually give this a very unique stone look. It will actually blend the colors nicely together. On her around the outside I'm going to have to be extra cautious but that's the way this goes. I'm not going to seal this up. I'm going to go ahead and do it in one shot. So let's start off with Bestial Brown. And the rawhide brown. And we're going to go ahead. Now these paints are ultra thin because they are formulated for airbrushing, so I'm being really, really cautious. Probably should have thinned them down a little bit, but that's all right. Probably could have gone a little bit less. Let's see what doing this will do. Ooh, that's a nice effect. I like that. Yep, and there's what I was talking about. To go back in with the original base coat color, so I didn't seal it off, which is my fault. It did the this being as liquidy as it is, it started soaking through the smoky ink that I just applied and ate right through it. But that's alright, it's only paint. Mistakes can be corrected. I'll show you the mistake that I made. You see the white primer showing through, so I'll just go back in and reapply the smoky ink in those areas. I actually like the way that stone has turned color. Since this movie was in black and white, you don't really know what the inside of the cave looked like, so it's open to interpretation. some of that paint along the edges. I 
it need an old crappy brush. Because further down those crevices it's not drying as fast, so I'm trying to help speed that process along. That dry for a few minutes we'll be back all right we're back this is sufficiently dried now I'm gonna take this Mornfang Brown from Citadel and it's a very reddish brown tone but I'm going to use this as a dry brush a very light dry brush I'm not gonna go real heavy because once I get that dry brushed in I'm gonna seal it and then go over it with uh, the MIG Productions Dark Wash and I'll seal it again and we'll start dry brushing uh, maybe a little more uh, the Mornfang Brown then Quicksand Brown then Bane Blade, Bane Blade Brown which will be the lightest shade that I'm going to use I'm not going to go any lighter than that so let this down just a little bit One thing I've learned, you want to keep your dry brushes slightly damp. Not soak, but just damp enough. So it builds up in near translucent layers. Overall, I like the color so far. Has a nice natural deep stone to it, deep stone look to it, I should say. And the enamel wash that I'm the dark wash is an enamel wash that uh, dries very flat. I've used it before, and it works quite well. I have to be very cautious about how much of it I use at a time. I know by the time I get this video up, it'll be a little bit on the late side, but I want to send a very big happy birthday to Mr. Paul Papp of Alternate Universe Model Builders. Hope your birthday was great, Paul. Hopefully, Virginia and I will be able to get up there uh, to this month's meeting. If not, we probably have to shoot for after the holiday season because my schedule is going to be quite possibly pretty yucky and that's 
being nice about it. <laughs> so now we have a very light reddish tone of the stonework. I actually like the way that looks. It's going to be a lot of fun doing that on the outside of her coat as well as the inside. So I'm going to seal this off. We come back, we'll do the uh, MIG dark wash. And then we'll get the uh, Green Stuff World uh, Quicksand Brown uh, as the next round of uh, dry brushing. I've already used the, uh, yeah, the Bestial Brown, so the Quicksand Brown will be the next one. So let me seal this off and uh, we'll be back. All right, we're back. I did find one other uh, color of brown I'm going to use. This is uh, Citadel Air Carac Stone. I'm going to use that for the lightest, lightest dry brushing. It'll be very minimal. So far, a very nice uh, reddish brown, deep brown, almost blackish brown tone of to the stone for the cave. So now I'm going to come in with uh, Meg Productions Dark Wash. As I wash this on in certain areas, I'm going to dab it off with one of these napkins just to not let it get too far overboard. I don't want to lose the color that I've got. I just want to get all the deepest recesses. It'll darken it down quite a bit, but if I have to re-dry brush some of it, it won't be too bad. Not bad. too bad. I should kind of like that. It's a little bit darker than what I intended, but and go back in with some of the original lighter brown tones and do some very, very gentle dry brushing to Bring those colors back out. It'll tie it all in really nicely.
I can still see all the original colors that we kind of puddled together and painted all in one shot underneath, although it's a little bit darker. It actually serves the purpose because this is the part that will actually be hanging down, so it's not going to be a whole lot of lighter colors showing through. But dry brushing somewhat lighter colors in and getting the detail out of the stone isn't such a bad thing. to help it dry faster. dried off. I'm actually going to take a little bit of the uh, rawhide and uh, bestial brown. I'm just going to dry brush a little bit in there. It'll be very, very transparent, but it'll bring back some of the colors from previous. Just enough. Starting to bring some of that color back out. A little very thin, so everything else underneath can be seen. Now I'll take the Mornfang Brown again and give that one last run over. For those of you who's used the uh, Citadel paint pots and cannot stand the fact that every time you let go of that lid the damn thing pops back down easy solution cut the hinges <laughs> probably one of the best things i've ever done with all the uh, paint pots that i have from citadel uh, cut all the hinges and i don't have to worry about it snapping back down on me while i'm trying to get paint out of it i did have one actually catch and as soon as I pulled the brush out the whole thing tipped over and went all over the place so yep not gonna have that anymore so I highly recommend that little tip cut the hinges on the paint pots you'll be happier that you did 
All right. show up on camera but it's I'm just barely barely touching the texture of this with the bristles I do not want a whole lot of paint transferring down just want enough as a very very gentle highlight stuff world quicksand brown where these green stuff world bottles constantly clog I'm not sure why It's actually starting to lighten that up the way I was hoping it would. I don't know if you can see that. It's actually starting to bring out the lightness and the color really, really well. I didn't want to go on too heavy.
It's actually getting a little bit lighter, but I like the way that that looks. Just light enough with the quicksand brown that it doesn't actually have to stand out that much. So that came out really, really good. So my next color is going to be Citadel Airs Bane Blade Brown. And i got to be real careful because this stuff is formulated for airbrushing, so it is incredibly thin. And i got to cut the hinges off that one, too. There's two that I didn't get. <laughs> Whoops. These next two colors are almost... Uh, they're almost a tan color. But I actually like the way that they look. I wound up using these two colors on uh, Grogu's uh, robes when I did the uh, Micromania Mando bust. And they were actually damn near spot on. I'm not going all over with the, uh, the Bane Blade Brown. I'm actually going in random spots here and there. I'm going to do the same with the, uh, the Karak Stone. Not too light, not too dark, kind of somewhere in between, but it actually looks really nice. I like it. What kind of kit builder would I be if I didn't try to bring out all the detail in the stonework that Jeff Yeager was so nice to sculpt for us all. I know that sounds sarcastic, but he went to the trouble of putting his absolute best into this sculpt. Why not put your best in the painting as much of the detail as you can get? And I gotta admit, I did miss doing this for the entire week that we were gone. But it was a, a nice little break from being out here in, being out here in Southern California. Uh, I'd never been to uh, Virginia before, and I was pleasantly surprised um, in more ways than one. Uh, really, really beautiful, more green than I've seen in the last several years. Fairly decent weather despite the fact that Hurricane Ian decided to turn north and inward toward the Carolinas after it hit Florida, which, you know, sad to say, yeah, 100 people have, you know, been confirmed dead since Ian hit Florida. But, you know, very thankful that, you know, Saul Alvarez, Tony Cipriano, Mar uh, Mark Worthling, and Jesse Garcia are doing just fine. Thankfully, you know, thankfully they didn't lose their lives in that disaster. The amount of damage that it did to uh, South Carolina was unreal. And as soon as it turned northward towards uh, the upper part of, because uh, we were supposed to go to Charlotte, uh, we wound up transferring through uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, and I was literally worried to death we were going to have to find another uh, another transfer hub to get to uh, Newport News Airport, which is where we wound up going. But I will say this, I did get a very ugly surprise 
and buying those airline tickets. And I had no idea that this was being done. That they now charge for choosing your seat. That was an absolute surprise, to say the least. Wound up costing us another 368 bucks just for all the seats that we uh, that we chose. Well, I guess with the pandemic costing the airlines money, they gotta give us the shaft back in return, right? And apparently they've been doing that since 2021. So... Okay, that... It's actually not half bad. I like that. I like that a lot. So there's where we're going to end with the underside of the dress for the cave. Multiple, uh, multiple washes, dry brushes, I actually like the way that turned out. All different colors throughout that stone. Looks really nice. So I'm going to seal this off and then I'm going to start working on the base coat for the stone on the inside of her coat and the outside of her coat. And we'll be right back when that's finished. All right, we are back after about 40 minutes of painting this. Um, a lot of really unique angles and a few choice curse words for the areas I couldn't reach. Uh, we got it to where we want it. Now I know the back side looks a little bit messy, but I have a plan in mind to blend all this into the coat in a very unique way. It's going to be a lot of dry brushing, but when it's done, it should look really, really great. So now I'm going to come in with the uh, rawhide brown and the uh, bestial brown and I'm going to do the same thing I did with the underside of the skirt except I'm not going to go darker tone on the side of the cave wall and the floor and around the back I'm going to go much lighter in tone instead this time so come in with this let's kind of Not exactly a perfect look, but once I get all this laid in, it should blend in really, really well. If you guys can see what I'm doing with that, it's probably going to dry a lot faster than the cave ceiling did and I did seal this off this time instead of uh, taking the risk of not sealing it and have some of the uh, white primer show through there are some areas on this back side of these two little uh, either st I can't remember if they're stalactites or stalagmites I <laughs> yeah, forgot uh, all I learned in grade school and high school already, but getting around the back side of these things was a real pain, and there's a little spot back here that actually cuts inwards that I can't even get a paintbrush in, so I had to do my best to cover that up. Bestial brown. And I'm just kind of, as before, kind of blending these two together on there. Because they're extremely thin. So they won't go on in a overly generous coat of paint. It'll be thin enough to where you'll see the darker paint underneath which is what I want 
And then once I go around the back side of the coat, I'll have to be really careful about how I do the stones here running up. <clears throat> but then all this will be dry brushed in. Let's see if I can dab some of that off. Smoky ink was a beautiful choice for base coat. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Knowing full well that what I was going to be doing next was not going to be a guaranteed success. I put about five coats of uh, Krylon matte lacquer on this just to be on the safe side. But that's the color tone that I'm getting now. You can see that. Yeah, it looks really good. Shows the darker tone right through and any white spots that show up get automatically pushed down underneath. So I'm liking the direction that this is headed in. And I'm not going to use the MIG Dark Wash on this this time around. I'm going to use Agrax Earthshade Wash from Citadel, which will darken it down a little bit, but not too much. Although it looks really messy right now, there is a method to my madness on this. I think the next color I'm going to go in with will be the quicksand brown after the uh, earth shade wash. And that should start to lighten it up. Whoa. Pull this back from the camera so I can clean this up a little bit. Nice to get a little bit of color variation in all the rock. Need to get this glove on so I don't get any fingerprints or dirt or anything off my hands onto that coat because it's going to stick out like a sore thumb. Sorry about the camera bump. Yeah, I'm liking the way that's going a lot. I may just decide altogether not to fill that gap in underneath where the skirt and the uh, the coat actually connect. That's going to be, God, that's going to be a real pain in the ass to try and do that. Especially trying to get Magic Sculpt or Epoxy Sculpt up in there to uh, blend that in properly. I don't think there's a way it's I could do it and have it look right. 
I may change my mind and give it a shot, but for right now, I, eh, I don't think that's going to happen. But we will see. Realize after a while, <laughs> she actually starts getting heavy. Even though a lot of this is going to be not really well viewable because of the way the skirt is set up, I think it will turn out just fine. But I'm going to try and get as much detail into it as I possibly can. Ooh, a little bit of a goof right there. touch up on that that'll be all right of that on the inside. Damn it. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to be careful on the outside of this coat because I'm already making a few mistakes. But I should be able to take care of that with a little bit of airbrush thinner and some water and a Q-tip. Pause this, <clears throat> excuse me, go around the backside. We'll come back and start uh, blending in the backside. So we'll be right back. All right, we're back, and I'm going to forego the Agrax Earthshade Wash. I think it's going to darken down the reddish tone that the previous two colors offered. So I'm not going to use that at all. I like how it looks along the back, it looks really, really good. All the stonework came out nice. So now, oops, I'm going to go in, <clears throat> excuse me, I think I'll go in with the, uh, the Bestial Brown first as a dry brush, and I'll wind up using one of these makeup brushes that I bought from Amazon a while back. Doesn't take a whole hell of a lot of pressure to get these things to work right. A 
a little bit of patience you can actually bring out a lot of fine detail with these things. I'm just barely touching I'm gonna do the walls I actually like the walls the way that they are got enough reddish tone to them that it actually stands out really really nice some of the stonework back here could probably take a little bit more might be hard for you guys to see on camera but I'm starting to see a little bit of a red tone come back to the stonework because I basically blended two colors together and one kind of knocked the reddish tone back a little bit so by doing this I'm kind of bringing that back out an underwater cave you can make it whatever color you want there's no rules you have to follow use your imagination and the rest takes care of itself Quicksand Brown. I'll start dry brushing this on there and see how that takes in. Oh yeah, I can start to see the color coming out of it now. thing doing this don't worry about what people say about your paintwork if they compliment it that's one thing if they criticize it you're building this for you you're not building this for the masses on social media if you choose to share that's perfectly fine I post photos quite a bit but don't let anyone ever discourage you from painting your kit the way you want. I'm not painting for a contest. Mike Calvert didn't ask me to do this. I'm doing this for me, but I chose to share it with you. So 
Always remember, paint for yourself, not for the rest of the world. As you can tell, or maybe you can't, it's actually starting to lighten up the cave floor a little bit. Working with makeup brushes like this, it does take a little while to get the color to lay down because it lays it down in a very, very soft manner so you can actually build up the color as you go. And these, take, these types of brushes do take a little bit of getting used to. apologize for turning this away from the camera but I need light at certain angles to be able to dry brush this the right way once I start in with a Bane blade brown and the more in the uh, Carrick stone it'll really be a lot lighter than what the base tone is, which I'm okay with. Zoom that back out a little bit. If I can get this finished off in this video, I'll be able to glue the dress in, be done with that part of it, then I can concentrate on the water, uh, her hair definitely needs to get done, I wanted to wait till I had the coat completely finished before I even thought about attempting that. Yeah, it is a little bit hard for me to get in some of these small areas with this brush. But I'm doing my damnedest.
start working my way around the back. switch over to my Colibri dry brush might be able to get a little bit better coverage on the backside because I'm also going to try and blend in oops, up into the coat Last colors I'll use is the vintage white, which is the base color for the coat, to actually blend in from the top down. So it makes it look like it's quite literally blended right into the bottom of the coat area. starting to look the way I was hoping it would like that so that's how the stone is starting to look at least for right here I'll start working my way around and we'll come back after I get that done all right we're back first round of dry brushing is done stones look much lighter Started dry brushing into the areas where the darker brown goes up into the coat. And I'm liking how this is going. So if I proceed on the way that I'm thinking, everything will work out just fine. So now I'm going to pop open this Bane Blade Brown. This is airbrush paint. It is incredibly thin. So I had to be really, really cautious about how light I go with this.
should work. I need to dry my dry this brush off a little bit more. It's still too wet. I do not want this paint to start streaking while I'm dry brushing. So we'll go back in again. I'm not even pushing down on this and it's really starting to lighten up that K4 quite a bit. This is sculpted, it is so hard to see at certain angles. God, I wish the humidity in the state would just disappear forever. Every time I put my elbow down, I get stuck to this paper towel. starting to lighten up that tone just enough. Not how well you guys can see that. Starting to get some nice variation in tone. Some lint. <laughs> but I'm starting to like the way it's turning out. I really didn't want to go for a very bright I wanted to keep it as dark as possible. But have just enough detail showing through. stone in it's really going to turn lighter in color that's why I'm going to be very very picky about how much of that I use on the inside but the outside I want it to have a much lighter tone than the underside of the coat tones, a lot of nice variations in the colors. So it looks, whoops, sorry about the camera bump. So it looks even more realistic. Even though this was a set piece <laughs> when they were filming it.
and I'm starting to blend the upper part near the coat back a lot. that to fade in even more. Some nice lighter tones on that on that stonework. Almost done with this round of dry brushing. I'll seal this off and I'll probably do the uh, next color off camera so you don't have to waste all your time watching me do this. round number two is done 
excuse me, seal that off, let it sit, and I'll do the uh, next color off camera, and we'll come back when that's finished. All right, we're back, and I started uh, testing out the vintage white over the top of the brown. It looks like it's going to blend it in really nicely. A few minor errors that I'll have to correct, but that won't be a very big, very big deal at all. So now I'm going to go in with this Karak stone, and this will be the final stone color dry brush that we're going to use. use this very very lightly this is a very bright color there we go sorry to turn that away from the camera Some of these angles are really hard to get this color into. The only thing about using this paint is because it's so thin, you can wind up overdoing what you don't want to overdo. I'd say I probably wiped over 90% of the paint 
out of this brush. And I'm still getting quite a bit out of it, so you have to take enormous care about how much you get in your brush and how much you wipe out. That's the inside of the cave. You see the highest points of where the Carrick stone is at. I'm not going to dry brush it anymore. That's going to be pretty much the end right there. I don't want to go too much lighter in any way, shape, or form because it just wouldn't look right. But all the highlights and way they're, the way that they're popping out, this looks really good and I'm very happy with how it's turning out. So we'll continue around. That's about as much as I'm getting on the brush as that little dot. Right there by my thumb. That's as much as I'm getting on this brush to dry brush with. And for a video, yes, this is a lengthy process, but for a kit like this that oops, this type of base has never been done before that I know of, you kind of have to throw conventional thought out the window and kind of go with what feels right, more or less. Sounds like my stepdaughter is home from work.
Still getting pieces of lint out of the paint from the rag. <laughs> it has a little bit of texture. That's how the final highlights will go in for the Carrick Stone. Still looks like a little bit of a mess around the coat, but I'm going to start blending that back with uh, the vintage white. That'll help push that back even more. Cave interior complete. Really like the way that turned out. Compared to what I did on the underside of the skirt, it's much lighter in color tone. Matter of fact, I'll put them side by side. Yeah, much lighter by far than what the cave ceiling looks like. So I'm going to seal this off. We come back, start dry brushing vintage white to blend back. All the areas around the coat that we do not want to look like a mess. It's about the best way I can put it. We'll be right back. All right, we are back. And now we're going to proceed to blend the rest of the brown toward the upper sections back. I like the way this looks. I'm very happy with it. I probably could have gone with a few washes here and there, but I wanted to try this route instead. See how I can blend it in properly. So let's get in on this. using one of these magic makeup brushes. This was an angled brush. Gives me a little bit better control. I may go back in with the Agrax Earthshade down here and do a uh, wash over just to kind of blend and tile that together. Racers in our wonderful area again. A 
waiting for NHRA to start sponsoring street signs. <laughs> Got that blended back rather nicely. I kind of like how that looks. It's not completely faded out, but it's not as solid as it was. But with these paints, the pigments, like I said, are very, very light. So you have to be careful and layer this stuff on bit by bit. Actually looks really good. I'm liking that. <clears throat> In the next video, probably tackle the hair. I may do the hair off camera because that's going to take me a while. So I'll probably do the hair off camera. focus on getting the uh, the creature head I'm not sure if I want to do him completed or I may do him partially completed that way it gives a sense of purpose to the overall piece like she's in the middle of painting him might be the best idea overall Just trying to like how that's turning out. And knowing full well it's probably gonna take hours for this video to get rendered with my even with my editing software. The last one I did took almost three full hours to render and over two and a half just to get loaded uploaded to YouTube, which was a real pain in the ass. But I know that's all based on internet connection and how busy their servers are.
I kind of like that. It's a nice, decent transition from the coat color into the rock. <clears throat> Excuse me. Some parts I need to soften up, others I need to leave alone. Might take me a little bit more, but I can do that. I can finish that up off camera, it won't be a big deal. So I'll probably have to seal it off and go in and blend it back again. But for a start, I really like the way this has turned out. Very, very happy with this. So much credit and a lot of shout out to Jeff Yeager for doing something that I don't think anybody's ever thought about attempting before and to put it into this tribute bust with her. Uh, it's a hell of a decision to make. And it accents the kit very nicely. He could have just had the coat going all the way down, but he took it one step further and made the cave part of the coat. That's a hell of a choice to make. I don't even want to think about how long it took how long it took him to do this. I know Jeff is a busy individual these days. Between Blackheart, Typhon, Pestilence Labs, Earthbound Studios. Typhon Studios. Jeff's a busy pup. I gotta hand him that. But he is damn good at what he does and it shows. And then the next video I will have the dress glued on completely. Once this will be finished, I won't have to worry about messing it up anymore. I'll just hit it with another round of dull coat and then that'll be done. Steel reinforced epoxy will definitely hold that stuff on. That's what she's completely glued together with. I don't use super glue or not even the five minute stuff. I use the steel reinforced because. It seems to want to hold better, although the working time is a little bit shorter than the standard five minute epoxy. It, you have maybe one to two minutes before the stuff starts to harden up. So that is how the back of the coat is gonna look. I'm gonna call this video done. I'll finish the rest off camera and for the work in progress part seven, we will look at doing the creature head, painting the water, and we are not that far away from being done. How she's going to look, I will admit painting all this cave is <laughs> its going to get overshadowed by the big ass creature hand sitting there, but for those of you that have not seen this completely fitted together, I'll go ahead and do that right now. That's how she will look. And you can see the gap underneath where that sits. Yeah, that's <laughs> that'd be a real pain in the ass to try and fill that in. But thus far that progress I'm liking a lot and no I won't have a seam to fill in there because that's just the way the skirt flows inside the coat edge overall I'm very pleased with how this has turned out 
so I'm going to call this video done. Like I said, I'll finish up the rest off camera and work in progress part seven. We'll do the water, uh, work on the creature head, and I'll paint the hair off camera as well. So for Millicent Patrick, work in progress part six. This has been the figure kit garage. I want to say thank you for everybody that has subscribed lately. Thank you for staying with me. Everybody stay happy. Uh, stay healthy. Stay safe. Build a kit.